Hi and welcome. So in this video, we're going to talk through how we solve systems of linear equations. So this is just a little overview of systems of linear equations. This isn't meant to be a comprehensive view of every way you could possibly solve these. We're just doing some motivation about systems that will then help us understand why we use matrices in later videos. So let's start with this idea of a system of linear equations and make sure we understand what that means. So in this context, a system is basically just a set or collection of items that go together. So for us, that means that we have the same variables involved with the linear equations we're dealing with. So it's a set or collection, and we denote it with this large bracket, and then we write our equations in the bracket. So the bracket tells us that this is a set, that the items go together. Then when we have linear equations, the linear refers to a specific type of equation. And so in two variables, it's going to look like ax plus by equals c. Or in three variables, we would have something like ax plus by plus cz equals d. The main thing to note here is that this is a function where all of the variables have an exponent or a power of 1. So we have x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1, z to the power of 1. There aren't any x squareds or any other variables to any higher powers. All the variables are just to the power of one. So for us, this could be a line in two variables. It could be an equation of a plane in three variables. That's what that equation is there. Or of course, we can do higher dimensional versions. We could have four variables, five variables, on and on, etc. Then equation just refers to a mathematical statement with an equal sign. So we are actually looking at equations with things on both sides of the equal sign. And altogether, we have a system of linear equations. So that's unpacking what the words mean, but let's look at some examples. So I'm going to just stick with a two dimensional and a three dimensional example. I'll show you what they're going to be first, and then we'll do one at a time. So let's say we want to solve the system y plus 3 equals 2x, and y equals negative 3x plus 2. So you'll see here we have that bracket to denote that this is a system. These two equations go together. And then we'll also do a three variable version. So we could solve the system 2x minus 3y equals negative 31, x plus y plus z minus 14 equals 0, and 4y equals 16 plus z. So this is what our systems will look like. And when we're asked to solve them, we're trying to find the x and y values or just the variable inputs that make both equalities true. Or in the three dimensional case, all three equalities true. So we're trying to find the solution that makes the whole system true all the time. Let's do this with the two dimensional version first, version with two variables. So in our two dimensional and three dimensional cases, because these are things we can draw, we can actually think of them both symbolically and graphically. So I'm going to solve these with two different methods. The first will be symbolic and the second will be graphic. For the symbolic method, we're really trying to find x and y values that make these true. So we're really trying to solve for y and solve for x. I'm going to focus on substitution as the method here in this video. There are a couple other methods for solving we'll talk about later, but we're going to focus on substitution here. So looking at our system, I see in the second equation, I'm told that y equals negative 3x plus 2. This means that I can replace y in my first equation with that negative 3x plus 2. So we're going to substitute for y. I know what y is, so I'm going to replace it in the first equation. So Using that y plus 3, I'm going to replace the y with negative 3x plus 2. Then I have my plus 3 equals 2x. Now I have an equation with just one unknown. x is my only unknown, and I'm going to solve for it. So if I combine 2 plus 3, I get 5. And I'll move the 3x over to the other side so that I have 5x on the right-hand side. This leaves me with 5 equals 5x. Dividing by 5 gives me x equals 1. So, okay, we found one of my answers, x equals 1. Now we need to find the corresponding y value that goes with it. So to do that, we can take either equation, and we just need to plug in 1 for x, substitute in 1 for x. So I'm going to do the y equals negative 3x plus 2 and replace x with 1. So I'm doing negative 3 times 1. 
that's negative 3. Adding 2 to that is negative 1. So my y value is negative 1, and together these make my final answer. So the point 1, negative 1 is the solution to this system. It's the point where both equations are true. Now we could graph these equations to really confirm that our answer is correct. I like to do this especially when we're in two dimensions because lines are pretty easy to graph. So looking at my original system, what I'm going to do is write these in the form y equals mx plus b. So that's slope intercept form, just so it's easier for me to graph them. So that first equation, I'll subtract the 3 over. I have y equals 2x minus 3. And in the second equation, I already have it in the right form. So it's y equals negative 3x plus 2. And now I can graph these. So 2x minus 3 has an intercept at negative 3. And our slope is up 2 over 1. Then for the second equation, we're at a vertical intercept of 2. And then we do minus 3 over 1, minus 3 over 1. And when we do this, we can see that the two lines intersect at our point 1, negative 1. And that was the answer we got with the first method using the symbolic substitution. And so this is good. This means that the lines intersect at this point, which matches our answer we found in the other method. So doing the two-dimensional cases aren't too bad. Things get more complicated as we start to look at three dimensions or even higher. But let's do an example here with the three-dimensional case, and I'll show you both the symbolic and graphing methods. So this can be a little tedious, there's lots of steps to do this, but I trust probably at this point you can do a lot of this math on your own. It's a lot of just algebra and manipulating things, so hopefully you feel confident with that, but I'll go through the steps as best as I can. So we're solving this system here. I gave us this earlier. This has three variables. So to use the symbolic method, our goal is going to be able to solve for one of the variables. So we have three variables here. We want to somehow get an equation that only has one variable in it. So I'm noticing that my first equation has x and y, and my last equation has y and z. So I can solve for z equals and x equals to get something in terms of y and replace it in my middle equation. Honestly, there are lots of ways to do this. I just sort of noticed that this was going to be the easiest way for me. You basically just need to solve for one variable and plug it into another equation until you can manage to get one with only one variable in it. You can see that this is really up to a lot of your own discretion and figuring it out on your own, which is part of why we actually are doing this in a linear algebra class. We're going to come up with a more algorithmic way to do this that isn't so up to you and just trying to kind of guess the best way to do things. But okay, that's for later. Let's do this example. So I'm going to take the first equation, 2x minus 3y equals negative 31, and I'm going to solve for x. So I'll add the 3y over to the right-hand side, and I'll divide everything by 2. So I'm getting x equals negative 31 over 2 plus 3 halves y. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my third equation where I'm going to solve for z. So I'll subtract this 16 to the left-hand side, I'm getting 4y minus 16 equals z. So now I have an x and a z equation, and I'm going to substitute those in to my middle equation. So I'll replace x with what I just determined it was, and I'll do the same for z. And now I have one equation that only has the variable y in it. So when I do this, I'm getting negative 31 over 2 plus 3 halves y, that's my x, plus y, we're leaving that alone, plus 4y minus 16. That's my z, and then I still have that minus 14 equals 0. And now we just solve for y. So this involves quite a few steps, and it's going to take me a little bit of work to do them. So if you're interested, I would recommend pausing now and working through this on your own. So simplify this statement we have here and solve for y, and then you can come back and compare with me and what we do. I think if you try to follow along, it's just going to go really fast. If you're not that interested in the algebra or the steps and you're willing to just trust my work, that's fine. But if you want to do it for yourself, you're taking your own notes, that sort of thing, I'd say pause now and work through this on your own, solve for y, and then come back. So this is a little tedious. I'm going to combine the negative 16 and the negative 14. I'm going to combine some of my y's together. Then I'm just going to get common denominators so that everything's over 2 so that I can start combining things. So altogether, I'm getting 13 over 2y, 
minus 91 over 2. So I know fractions aren't very pretty, but we're just going to keep going for it. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I trust you could go through the steps. So to solve for y, we add the 91 over 2 to the other side, and then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm getting that y is equal to 91 over 2 times 2 over 13, which when I simplify this, I'm doing 91 divided by 13, which is 7. And so now I just need to back substitute to find my x and my z values. That should say z there, not y. So when I do this, I substitute in my y equals 7 into both of my x and z equations. So I'm getting that x is equal to negative 31 over 2 plus 3 over 2 times 7. That's negative 31 over 2 plus 21 over 2, which is negative 10 over 2 or negative 5. I repeat this for z, so I get that z is equal to 4 times 7 minus 16. That's 28 minus 16, which is 12. So there we go. We have my x, y, and z. We'll write that as a coordinate point. It's negative 5, 7, 12. And that is my final answer to this system. So similar to the two-dimensional case, we can also graph this. Of course, graphing equations of planes isn't really something I know how to do by hand, and even if we could do it by hand, I'm not sure it would be that illuminating. So I'm going to show you it graphed in a 3D grapher just to really confirm what's happening here. In practice, we would most likely use a symbolic process to find the right answer, but it's cool to see the graphical representation to make sense of what's going on. So here we have the three planes. We can see that they're all intersecting in many places, but the three planes have one point in common between them. So if we look at just two of the planes, they might have a lot of points in common. They intersect at a line, but all three planes only intersect at one point, and that point is our negative 5, 7, 12. So pretty cool. There we go. This matches our answer. All right, so that's it for this video. We just did two examples of solving systems of linear equations. This is just meant to give you an overview of what a system of linear equations looks like, and we're going to start building on it in the following videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.